experiencing his unconditional love. And one of the keys is, is that when we don't understand our sin has been forgiven, then we get into self-punishment, guilt, and shame. And sin creates a blindness. So when God wants to bless you abundantly, it's hard for you to believe that it's coming because you, you hear it, you embrace it, but inside your soul, you know you've got this unconfessed sin or this sin that is tormenting you or a generational sin. And when it's, when it's, when it's uh, tormenting you, what it does is it kills the joy of that vision. It's actually a curse and it causes health issues and doubt and unbelief. All those things come, but let's agree that tonight, let's agree tonight on this Thursday night or whenever you're watching us, let's agree right now, go in the comments, let me know where you're watching from, but let's agree that tonight I will experience unconditional love. Go ahead and put it in the comments. I will experience unconditional love. It's interesting because tonight is what in the Hebrew calendar, it's Tushbivat. It's that's a celebration of trees. So everyone says, well, why are we celebrating trees? Well, Tushbivat, that is a time of celebration of legacy because it, the, uh, it's scriptural to be able to plant and it's a scriptural to be able to take dominion because that was the first thing that the Lord told Adam and Eve. He said, what? Be fruitful and multiply. Take dominion over the land. That's part of the problem is we have not taken dominion over the land. And as human beings, we have not associated spiritual alignment with God. And the power of the forgiveness of sin actually is the first stage as to bringing blessings onto earth. Because our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we align ourselves in the power of repentance then what happens is that brings the blessings from heaven to earth. And so uh, I'm going to do our acts uh, tonight uh, to apply. Apply, change, and transform, act, A-C-T. And we're going to apply this first scripture, which I think is Matthew 9 and 2. It's probably one of the most powerful scriptures for today's world. It's always been powerful, but I think let's take a fresh look at it. And it says, Son, be of good cheer. And it says yours, but here I put my name, and I want you to put your name in there. Go ahead and put your name in the comment. I say, current sins are forgiven me. So that means me. I take ownership of it. My sins, current sins are forgiven me. And see, you need to personalize that and understanding that you have power to be able to make a change in your life. Why? Because see, here's the change. For the wages or what you get paid of sin is death. So sin is the key issue. Sin is killing your dreams, your joy. Sin is killing your passion. Sin is causing self-punishment, self-destruction, sickness, disease, curses, and hexes and vexes. All the things that attack us come through the door of sin. But the good news is this, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord, according to Romans uh, 6 and 23. So the gift of eternal life is Christ, Jesus, and the reason it's Yeshua the Messiah is because Yeshua Messiah's blood removes the sin that stops the death. So the blood and the repentance takes, a, takes things that are dead or paralyzed and it resurrects them into life. And so the power of the transformation is hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. So what happens is the longer that we tolerate sins in our life, it actually makes our heart sick. That's what's happening in our nation right now is no one wants to call this is sin and that is not. Well, anytime you have policies, and, and believe me, with all my heart, I am a policy individual. I am really not a party individual. I want policies. I want God's blessings for you and for us, our nation, and all the nations that you're watching. I want our nations to be blessed. The sheep nations will be blessed when our policies lined up with God's word, which brings blessing, and not against God's word. 
you know, I think it's very uh, dangerous. And, and this was something that, that I was concerned with, is that when our nation lays a hand on a Bible and says we are going to trust and honor God, and yet our behavior and our policies are contrary to God, that is a dangerous place to be in as a nation because that, that turns into a place where, where we're actually challenging or mocking God. That is not a good place to be in. But we need to understand that hope deferred, it says in Proverbs 13 and 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. So this is a great uh, uh, allegory of the tree of life is, is Christ Jesus. So we can say hope is killed and it makes our body physically sick. But when we understand that the desire of our soul, our heart, is the tree of life, that Jesus hung on a cross, took 39 stripes on his back, and actually removed or expunged our sin. So when we understand that, son, be of good cheer, and your sins are here, my sins, are forgiven me or forgiven you. When we understand that the good cheer, the only hope for good cheer is the forgiveness of sin. The only hope for health is the forgiveness of sin. The only hope for all nations is to call on the name of God and all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to just read, I wrote down some of the benefits of the power of forgiveness. And the first one is, is it renews your mind. Because see, when, you're, when, you're, when your mind and your soul and you are tolerating sin, one of the things that it does is you cannot see into the supernatural. Sin blinds you to be able to see. Sin actually opens your eyes to look at temptation. The more you sin, the more you see temptation. The more you apply the blood of Jesus and repent, the more you can see into the supernatural. Sin causes deafness in the spirit because the word says, my sheep know my voice and follow not another. Sin sets your soul free from the freedom of the guilt of sin, and that allows you to receive the blessing of unconditional love. But uh, So repentance brings a freedom from that. The repentance also brings a door of new beginnings because the scripture says, that the, the Lord's mercies are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. Repentance also breaks the chains and bondages of familiar or generational iniquitous structures in your bloodline. Repentance also releases the gift of intimacy with God so that when you go, you'll want to spend time in the word. You're going to want to pray. Uh, repentance also brings that inner peace. It will cause your blood pressure to come down your gastrointestinal system to operate properly. It's a great way to stay free from sickness and disease. Uh, eight, and I love this, but repentance, that's why it's good to repent early and often. Repentance repels or stops delays of delivery of things in your life. And repentance is the door that releases joy, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. And tenth, Repentance is healthy relationship, not just with God, but with others. When you're not so sin conscious and you're, you're free from what it says right here in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. It's death in relationships. It's death to finances, death to your health. But praise God, the key to getting rid of the death of sin is the gift of God of eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so if you're not born again, right now you can make a conscientious decision. You know what? You may be born again, but you need to make a recommitment in your life. And one of the ways to do that is to say, Lord, my hope is getting deferred. I'm taking a fair appraisal of where I'm at right now. I'm losing my vision. I'm losing my joy. I'm feeling isolated. I'm feeling depressed. I need that freedom of unconditional love. How do I prepare myself for that outpouring of unconditional love. And I want, I, want to pr I want to pray for you right now. Father God, in the name of Yeshua. Lord, Father God, we repent for our sins. And we decree your word according to Matthew 9 and 2 that says, son, say, I'm a son. Go ahead in the comments and say, I'm a son and I'm a daughter. Lord, 
I'm going to be of good cheer because the joy of the Lord and the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Lord, I am cheerful that and put your name in here. I'll say Kurt's sins are forgiven him. They're forgiven me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, according to your covenant promise. Lord, I will change because I will quit trying to blame people, places, parties, and situations for the death of things that are happening in my life. And I'll be very sober. I'm going to narrow it down because the wages of my sin and the sin in my nation and the sin everywhere is death. Sin is the issue, not people. And the people who are engaging and, and are in, uh, cooperating with that sin, but we are to cover them in intercession. But the wages of sin for everything is death. And so, Lord, we understand that we have the gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, according to Romans 6 and 23. And Father God, we apply the gift of the salvation of the blood of Jesus over our life, that Lord, let it be written in, our, in the courts of heaven that our sins have been expunged, which means removed. It's a legal term, but it's also a spiritual term. Our sins are expunged. That means they have been removed from the record as if they weren't, they weren't uh, um, committed in Yeshua's name. And T, the transformation is this. Father God, my hope has been deferred. Just be honest with God. Say, Lord, I've been under it a little bit. I've been, I've been oppressed. The news isn't good. Situations, I'm trying to adjust my life to this new uh, you know, situations. Like Christy and I are getting ready to do some traveling. And like, how do we travel? How we go? Everything is changing. And, and, you know, we're older people. And we like, you know, well, I liked it way the old way where I just went and traveled and got on a plane. Listen, I took that all for granted. I used to complain about it, but boy, I don't complain anymore. But Lord, we're wanting to visit Israel. We're wanting to go and see all the new trees we planted in the Golan Heights. And, and we're wanting to go and, and see our Holocaust survivors and give them a big hug and see our soldiers, see all of our employees there, family. We've got family members there. We're wanting to go, but Lord, our hope is deferred. And it makes our heart sick, but we know that when we do go, and we will, when the desire comes, it will be the tree of life. Why? Because anything that has a tree has fruit, and fruit is the blessing and the reward to the righteous. And the Bible says that I'll know what, you'll know a tree by its fruit, but the fruit of love, peace, joy, long-suffering, temperance, and kindness, of which such there is no law, according to Galatians 5. When we come together, let the joy of the Lord, let the feast of the Lord, let the celebration of the Lord. And what is the celebration of the Lord? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Be a good cheer, Kurt. Your sins are forgiven. The wages of sin, the devil, he cannot condemn you. He cannot cut you off. It doesn't make any difference what's happening in the world. My inheritance and my blessing is there. Revive your dream. Have passion. Have prosperity. Prepare that your fruit will be abundant and God will bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. I hope this has helped you tonight. I hope it lifts you up. And I want to share something very special with you on this celebration of the Feast of Trees on this uh, uh, this this time. And, and it's really for me, the reason, the reason I love, you know, our ministry, I don't know if you know this, but House of David is our church, okay? That's our community. That's where we all come together for the feast. And you're part of House of David and Kurt Landry Ministries. Kurt Landry Ministries is bringing you this broadcast right now. That's our, 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 our outreach. And Kurt Landry Ministries takes care of all of our humanitarian aid. And then we have a ministry called My Olive Tree that we started many years ago. And it was birthed because we had a meeting with finance minister at that time, Benjamin Netanyahu, and he said, it's great that you're bringing aid. You know, at this time, uh, we had brought over $20 million of aid into Israel, and, and uh, the finance minister knew that. He was thanking us, thanking you for all that aid. This was in 2004, and he said, but if you could bring us a ministry that brings jobs and brings unity, and I thought, wow, what would that be? And we prayed, and the Lord showed us Amos chapter 9, verses 11 through 15, and it kind of says, you know, and, and that day I'll restore the tabernacle of David that has fallen down, and these Gentiles who are called by my name will do this thing, and they will plant vineyards, and they will plant oil trees, 
And then they make a statement in verse 15, I love this, that they'll be planted in the land that the Lord has given them and they shall not be uprooted. And of course, being an intercessor and one that does prophetic acts where we do something to make a statement like, okay, this land won't be moved. And now 50,000 trees later in the Negev desert that, uh, and all the resources that have gone to Holocaust survivors and, and all the resources have come. But a lot of times people forget that the people that we're planting with, that these are actually real families. I mean, this, we say families farms because it's very difficult in Israel right now. And I want you to go to Israel, I-S-R-A-E-L-M-O-T dot com forward slash sponsor. And, and what's going to come up on your screen is this. I, I want to show this to you. I'm so proud of this. I want, Megan's going to share something with you. I'm going to just turn it on so you can see. But when you bring it up, what you're going to do is you're going to come to this page here and it says, be fruitful and multiply. Okay. That's where you're going to go. It says, be fruitful and multiply. And, and I, and I want you to meet the, the Golan family. Okay. I want, I want you to meet them because these are real people. This is not, you know, this is a father. They, they moved from, uh, I think it was hungry. If I remember the story, right. And they came to the land of Israel and their goal was they wanted to farm and they wanted to plant olive trees. So, but anyway, I want you to go and I want you to, uh, to listen to this story. And if the Lord leads, it'd be great if you would participate with this. But I want, I want you to see a little bit of this, I hope. You have a dream to see Israel flourish. You have a dream for her restoration and to see prophecy fulfilled. You've read about it, you've prayed about it, but today we're going to talk to you about an opportunity that we have to participate, to partner with a family in Israel and to participate in what God is doing. Today I'm going to introduce you to Eitan and Edan. They are a family in Israel who have a desire to farm the land of their ancestors. If you think about it, it's the first biblical commandment that God gave to Adam and Eve to take dominion, to multiply, to be fruitful. Today I want to introduce you to their family and share a little bit of their story and share how you can partner with my olive tree and fulfill their dream and their vision for leaving a legacy. So anyway, I, I, I want you to, I want you to go there. So go to Israel, MOT.com forward slash sponsor. And one of the reasons I want you to do that is here's the reason. See this son, son, Wow. Or you can put daughter. That is the key to really experiencing the forgiveness of sin that your family has been forgiven sin. And your family's been forgiven sin because you've been grafted in to this Jewish Messiah who hung on a cross freely God incarnate without sin. The Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world allows you to put your name in this spot right here. Your sins. Be cheerful. Your sins. So what he's saying is that, you know what? You don't have to wait to get to heaven to be blessed. You can be blessed on earth because I brought my son to forgive your sins so that the wages of sin is not death. So there's no longer to be hope deferred to make the heart grow sick because the desire is the tree of life. And I thought, what a great way to activate this reality is by you, Aton, the father. He's a real man. He lives in the Negev in Israel. He wants his son, his daughter-in-law, his grandbabies, just like my grandbabies, he wants them to have a legacy, a fulfilling Bible prophecy. And you're one of those Gentiles who are called by his name, who does that thing. We need revival. Sow a seed, plant a tree. Believe God that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, forgave your sin. The wages of sin have been canceled in your life. You're no longer crippled by the wages of the sin of death, by the gift of Jesus Christ as your Lord. And your hope is not deferred because you're activating your hope now. Receive the love, 
receive the hope. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much for all you do for this ministry. And thank you so much for all you do for my olive tree, another one of our ministries, helping it prosper. They really need your help now. So go to israelmot.com forward slash sponsor and sponsor your tree today and let your hope be released of a future. God bless you and shalom.